It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. Not during the festival. There could be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. Let her alone. Why are you troubling her? She's done a good service for me. The poor are always with you. You can be kind to them whenever you wish. Not so with me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. But truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the whole world, what she has done will be remembered. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city. You will find a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him and go into where he enters. Say to the owner of that house, The teacher says, Where is the upper room where I might eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upstairs room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. One of you who's eating with me. It's one of the twelve, one who dips the bread in the bowl with me. For the Son of Man will go as it is written of him. But woe to him by who the Son of Man is betrayed would have been better for him not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, Take, for this is my body. And this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of many. I will not drink of this fruit of the vine again until I drink it with you anew in my Father's kingdom. You will all desert me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Even though all become deserters, 
I will not. Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. Sit and wait for me while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. I, I'm deeply grieved, even unto death. Sit and pray. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, to you all things are possible. So let this cup pass from before me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not keep awake for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you do not fall into the time of trial. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. Once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, What's this? Are you still sleeping, catching your rest? Enough. Wake up. The hour has come. See, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Look, here is my betrayer. Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I a bandit that you've come after me with swords and clubs? Day after day, I was with you teaching in the temple. You did not lay a hand on me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders were assembled. Now the chief priests and the council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am. And you will see the Son of Man sat at the right hand of the Father, coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You've heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. I do not know or understand what you are talking about. 
This man is one of them. Certainly, you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. I do not know this man that you are talking about. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders, the scribes, and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? So you say. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again. Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Then, what do you wish me to do with the man you call the King of the Jews? Crucify him! Why? What evil has he done? Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, and they clothed him with a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. Hail, King, King of, of the, the Jews! Jews. struck his head with a reed and spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. Then after mocking him, they stripped him of his purple cloak. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene and they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and then build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross. He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, that we may see and believe. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi! Eloi! Lama Sabachthani! My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? Listen, he is calling for Elijah. Let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, 
put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger and Jesus, and Salome. And there were many other women who had come up to follow him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who himself was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, asked if he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid.